So, uh, hello, hello, hello everyone, uh, and thank you for joining this talk as part of the networking strand of the uh, OCP's Tech Week. Uh, today I'm going to be exploring how the existing Sonic network operating system, which has widespread traction within data centers, could be extended to support functionality required by operators providing services at the telco edge. Before I begin to delve into the details um, of extending Sonic, um, a short introduction. My name is Paul Carter and I'm on product management for the networking division of Metaswitch Networks. Those of you who are interested in disaggregated networking and have been, o been attending OCP, TIP and similar conferences over the last few years are probably well aware that I've seen disaggregated networking as the future for uh, telco networks as well as data centres for several years now. <clears throat> For those of you not familiar with Metaswitch, uh, we were founded over 30 years ago and throughout that time have provided networking and communication solutions. Over the last 15 or so years, the networking division of Metaswitch has provided fully field hardened implementations of networking protocols to our OEM customers, including layer two, layer three, MPLS, and more recently, eVPN and segment routing. Our customers then integrate these protocols into their own network operating systems and devices and these now power many carrier grade networks around the globe. I'm sure you're all well aware of how disaggregated networking solutions are becoming the norm in data centers. However, service provider networks have continued to rely on traditional monolithic devices. Over the last few years though, initiatives such as TIP have begun to push disaggregation within service provider networks through group groups like the disaggregated cell site gateway, Open RAN, Open Soft Hall, and others. These initiatives are now getting traction within the, within the industry with many major operators such as Vodafone, Telefonica, Deutsche Telekom, and BT working with both software and hardware vendors to drive innovation, feature velocity, and capex savings within their networks. At the moment, the disaggregated network operating systems offered by uh, software vendors in this market are still fairly closed solutions implementing the functionality and open interfaces specified, but each such NOS is a completely separate offering fully controlled by the vendor. On the other hand, Sonic is a fully open network operating system allowing anyone to leverage the functionality it has, integrate it with their own systems and add their own capabilities to it, and can choose whether to contribute those enhancements back to the community or maintain them as proprietary extensions. In this talk, I'm going to explore how Sonic could be extended to become suitable for using telco networks providing network services at the edge or further into the network and provide similar levels of openness and extensibility that Sonic offers in the data center today. At the moment, there's no commitment or roadmap for these extensions, but through this talk, I hope to generate community enthusiasm and engagement so that it can become a reality. Sonic was initially developed by Microsoft and open source in 2017 to allow it to decouple the networking software from the hardware in its Azure data centers. Since then, the Sonic community has grown considerably with adoption by other cloud scale data center operators like LinkedIn, Tencent, Alibaba and Baidu. Also to include vendors and integrators such as Dell, Arista, Mellanox, Broadcom, Edgecore and others. Unsurprisingly, given that background, Sonic is currently deployed primarily on top of rack ethernet switches in cloud scale data centers but it's increasingly extending its reach into leaf spine networks too. And as I'll show in a few minutes, has the capability to go further to support WAN and other routing use cases. That could change the way many networks are run by enterprises, service providers, as well as the hyperscalers. Before we go any further, please note it's not necessarily the case that all the functionality provided by such a Sonic for telco networks would actually be open source. It's very likely that parts of it would be closed source and be treated as a commercial extension to Sonic. But well, that should not significantly affect the ability of service providers to leverage the openness and extensibility of Sonic. Right, let's move on and look at the Sonic architecture. This diagram shows the architecture of Sonic today, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with this. In just three years, Sonic is going to support a wide range of features. As you can see, the supported functionality is distributed across many independent containers with each of the orange dashed boxes in this diagram representing a separate container. That gives the system good separation of functionality and protection against failure of single components and the ability to independently upgrade elements while the rest of the system continues to operate with zero downtime. The switch state service or SWSS container 
takes advantage of open source key value pair stores to manage all switch state requirements and stores them in the really server database in the center. That database holds all of the device configuration and the network state and notifies interested components of any changes to that state. Sonic uses the open source FRR layer three protocol stack based on Quagra and Zebra. And this provides an implementation of BGP with eVPN VXLAN to be uh, added soon. It also supports OSPF, although that's not really used by the hyperscalers. There are also implementations of ECMP, LLDP, LAG and LACP, which is provided by the TeamD container. These protocols program the underlying architecture via the SyncD container, uh, and that contains an implementation of the switch abstraction interface. The SI is key to the current and future success of Sonic. It defines an API that provides a vendor-independent way of controlling forwarding elements, such as a switching ASIC, an MPU, or software switch in a uniform manner. The SI API has gained widespread support from most major ASIC vendors, including Broadcom, Mellanox, Marvell, Cisco, and Juniper. That breadth of support gives SI and Sonic and the operators that deploy it the capability to draw a deploy a heterogeneous network using equipment and software from multiple vendors, uh, which remains reliable while driving innovation amongst those vendors. Sonic has many features which make it a good base for a fully featured network operating system. The common management components, SNMP and CLI, allows users to get started quickly and easily, as well as being able to check the state of the system. Also, the platform SDK and PMON container provides common management of hardware components like fans, LEDs, etc. Finally, Sonic has a strong roadmap containing several features that will be of direct benefit to any move to extend support for WAN use cases, particularly radius AAA support and time synchronization techniques such as PTP. However, the fairly short list of protocols supported by Sonic today is missing many of those that are required for the sorts of network devices that are deployed at the edge of service provider networks, including major features like IPMPLS, ISIS, and segment routing as well as extensions to protocols like BGP for features like BGP-LS and BGP-LU uh, that are also not currently supported uh, by FRR. Before I move on to talk about how to uh, extend the Sonic architecture for telco edge use cases, let's review the types of devices I'm referring to and their required capabilities. This is inten intended to be, but isn't, and isn't an exhaustive list uh, there are many features not covered by the previous slide on current Sonic capabilities, all by this slide. And anyway, the full list varies from region to region and from operator to operator. But this does, I hope, cover the main points. The simplest of these devices are those closest to the core of the network, aggregation and pre-aggregation routers, which have similar software requirements, at least at this level of detail. But considering just the requirements for an aggregation router NOS that aren't satisfied by Sonic today or on the roadmap, the major gaps uh, that we can see are support for ISIS as the IGP and then IPMPLS to support layer two and layer three VPNs across the network. Over the last year, segment routing has also become an essential feature for these devices, as most operators are planning to roll out SR in their MPLS networks to replace LDP. In addition, many operators have centralized management systems to control their network and requirements to support NetConf interfaces and standard open config game models are becoming increasingly prevalent whereas support for Chef, Puppet and similar are more commonly used within the data center. Cell site gateways provide the backhaul connectivity for mobile base stations and have traditionally been monolithic, tightly integrated systems. But with the move to 5G, cell sites will become far more numerous and smaller and also require support for value added services, network slicing, etc. This will drive operators towards disaggregated solutions with open architectures, or allowing them to innovate and meet consumer demand at a high velocity making Sonic a great fit for these devices. As operators extend their MPLS and segment routing networks right to the edge, modern cell site gateways will need to support these same advanced protocols as aggregation routers and also have quality of service features like uh, HQOS and OEM features like Y1731, TWAMP, etc. Finally, broadband network gateway devices increasingly combine PE router functionality with traditional BRAS features and need to handle lawful intercept for compliance with regulatory requirements and support AAA for subscriber management, as well as various encapsulation methods and protocols to be able to terminate subscriber connections. In fact, in scenarios like that shown in the diagram, uh, the BNG has to aggregate more subscribers than in previous generations. 
perhaps up to 128k subs or even beyond. And that can only be achieved with a chassis-based solution. And uh, more on that later. Now let's move on to show how the sonic architecture can be adapted to meet these requirements. So on this slide, I'm showing the first steps towards an architecture uh, to meet the requirements of the use cases covered in the last slide. This first step is for a standard single AC device targeting, for example, a pizza box router. The new components are those uh, shown here, highlighted in dark blue. Immediately, you can see that the overall architecture is unchanged and much of the current sonic functionality continues to be leveraged. That means that a NOS based on this enhanced architecture will continue to benefit from many of the features of the core sonic implementation available today and those added in the future. The first and most obvious change is the replacement of the BGP container, which uh, contained FRR and Zebra with a, a new routing container holding implementations of the enhanced protocols required for the telco devices. In fact, a fully featured enhanced control plane could also replace the LLDP and TMD containers. There's also no particular reason why the enhanced control plane would need to be implemented in a single container. Uh, it could be split across multiple containers to provide separation of functionality between protocols or protocol families. Extensions to the Redis server will allow these protocols to store both their configuration and the additional network state associated with them. As I mentioned at the start, these protocol implementations may be closed source, but providing they integrate with the open Redis server database extensions, different protocol implementation could be swapped in or out, giving operators the ability to choose the protocol engine that best suits, suits their need. So this diagram shows the sheer number of protocols and components that may need to be supported by this enhanced control plane. As with the existing containers, these protocols will be integrated with Sonic using one or more sync D components, which are not shown here. In order to support the new networking concepts and to be able to program the ASICs accordingly, the SI SDK will need some enhancements too. Uh, and ASIC vendors who wish to address this new market will need to add those features to their SI implementations. The second major change is the new services container where features like Radius, AAA, DHCP, Lawful Intercept, etc. Can be, can be implemented along with encapsulation protocols. Again, these may well be implemented across multiple containers. Finally, management options are added, are extended by adding a NetComp agent and associated YAM models alongside the CLI. There are several NetComp agents available, both open and closed source, and the chosen agent will need to be integrated with the Sonic architecture. In summary, uh, I hope that this shows that the Sonic design is flexible and robust enough to support the functionality needed for these sorts of devices. Clearly, the implementations of the protocols and other services are non-trivial, but the containerized architecture allows much of that complexity to be abstracted away and existing implementations to be integrated into this architecture. As I mentioned earlier, simple single board white box routers will not be able to handle the sort of throughput or have the port account required of some of the devices we're targeting. To address that, Sonic is developing support for a chassis-based architecture. On a chassis, there are multiple line cards that each have their own ASIC and a CPU. In addition, there are fabric cards that link the line ASICs together to form the chassis data plane. But these fabric cards do not have their own CPU. And finally, there are a pair of root processor or RP cards, which are pure compute controller cards running in active standby mode. In this architecture, Sonic is running a modular way. There's an instance on the line card with some small extensions and an instance on the active root processor for the fabric, uh, and that takes care of the rest of the chassis architecture. It's important to note that when the protocol is running its BGP, the chassis still looks like a single box from the outside. Importantly for us in this system is the database and org agent that contains the smarts about how program, programming information is pushed to different cards, both of which are core Sonic components. If the database on one card is programmed as normal, then the local ORC agent will do local programming and also push that configuration, that programming uh, to the central database. That then shares it with all the other ORC agents and ensures that the fabric chips are programmed as well. This means that if we want to run a new protocol, say ISIS centrally, then if we get its programming into the database, the rest of the chassis handling should already be done for us. The real difference between this approach and running just BGP on the line cards will be that the uh, protocol packets have to be sent up to the RP 
and into ISIS, uh, and then send them out again via the light cards. Okay, that was a very brief and high level overview of the Sonic chassis architecture. More information is available from the Sonic project group. Uh, but I hope that this has shown that it is feasible to extend the core Sonic chassis architecture to support telco functionality required, and therefore will enable the creation of devices with a high uh, port count and throughput that are going to be required uh, for some of the devices I uh, mentioned earlier. The last use case I have to discuss today is that of a version of Sonic using, the so using a software data plan. With an implementation of a virtual Sonic, it would, would be possible to deploy a device like this on a standard x86 server or as an instance within Azure, for example, on Azure Stack Edge. In this case, the architecture is very similar, except that the enhanced SI implementation would interface directly with the software data plane, which will, using DPDK or similar, interface directly with the configured network port. Within MetaSwitch, we've done some prototyping of a system like this. Uh, and as this screenshot shows, um, we have been able to achieve a throughput uh, of uh, about three gigabits per second using a single core on an on an Azure VM where three gigabits is the uh, per second is the limit imposed by Azure for the VM instance type that the test was done on. So uh, in this device, the picture is receiving uh, iMix traffic on IF1 at the top left uh, and routing it out again on IF2 as shown below that. Uh, then the graph at the top right shows that uh, it's handling uh, 1 million packets per second uh, with the red line uh, there tracking the very small difference in the packets being sent out versus those received. And that's actually the small amount of ARP and BGP traffic being received on top of the, uh, uh, the data for forwarding. Finally, the graph at the bottom right shows that CPU one is 50% busy and uh, CPU two is idle. And as these are dual core CPUs, uh, you know, that translates to, uh, the, to just one core being busy whilst uh, forwarding that three gigabits per second of traffic. So, uh, Although a virtual router cell site gateway or BNG will not be able to handle the uh, uh, same level of traffic as a physical device, having su uh, such a virtual device available could allow some interesting use cases to be explored. For example, a hybrid BNG solution could terminate physical lines and run full PE router functionality on a physical device while offloading services such as AAA, OAM and telemetry to a co-located virtual device. Okay, uh, I hope that this talk has shown the path forward to creating a disaggregated networking solution based on Sonic for deployment in telco edge networks. Sonic's flexible containerized architecture makes it an ideal basis for an enhanced NOS, <coughs> pardon me, uh, supporting advanced control plane protocols like IPMPLS and segment routing, as well as the functionality required by service providers such as HQOS and OEM features that aren't currently supported by the core Sonic architecture. Some of these extensions will be added to the core open source Sonic solution, uh, but closed source protocol stacks and other services can also be integrated with Sonic to provide field hardened carrier grade capabilities that are unlikely to have open source solutions in the short or even medium term. With a NOS based on this um, Sonic architecture, it will be possible to create disaggregated solutions for multi de multiple devices in service provider networks, targeting hardware from a wide range of vendors uh, and with support from many different ASICs uh, from multiple suppliers. Through extensions to the management capabilities of Sonic, such as adding a NetComp agent, it will be possible to integrate such a disaggregated NOS with the centralized management solutions that most service providers have in their networks already. And looking beyond the basic architecture, there's also the opportunity to extend it to support large chassis based solutions or even a virtual solution based on a software data plane for deployment on standard platforms. Given the flexibility of Sonic and the opportunities it presents, I believe Sonic could become the Linux of networking with multiple variations or distributions to use the Linux term available for operators to choose from, each with their own strengths and uh, meeting the needs of multiple use cases within the network, helping reduce fragmentation while also driving innovation. So thank you for your time today. If this talk has sparked your interest in such a solution, whether it was a vendor, an ASIC manufacturer, an operator, all systems integrator, I'd urge you to get involved. And if you're not a member already, 
join one or both of these existing communities to help turn it into reality. Sonic already has a community of more than 850 members, including major cloud operators, service providers, silicon and component suppliers, as well as network hardware, uh, OEMs and ODMs, and systems integrator. Although most of my talk is focused on changes to Sonic, there will also be extensions needed to the SI API to support the programming of new objects to ASICs. Uh, and the SI also has a very active community within OCP. And at Metaswitch, we are looking forward to working with everyone to specify and implement these changes and build momentum towards turning this into reality. Uh, so thank you. I hope you found that interesting. And uh, hopefully we have a few minutes still available uh, so that we can open up for questions. Yeah, we do have a few. We do have some time, Paul. So anyone that has a question, please feel free to put it into the, the chat tool. And Rupa, I don't believe, uh, Shin, are we seeing any questions for Paul? No. Yeah, um, checking. Yeah. Okay, any questions from the audience? Um, you can input your uh, question in the chat window, or you can click to gain speaker access to join the Zoom meeting so that um, we have your audio. Okay, good. Seems like uh, we don't have questions. Um, 